try to finish everything inshallah soon one hadith that I want to share with you is the hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam Man ahabba an yalqallaha tahiran mutahharan fal yalqahu bizawjah Whoever wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he is tahir and mutahhar, he is pure and purified. If you want to meet Allah with purity, with a spiritual cleanliness, then you must meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your wife with your spouse even when Adam alayhi salam was asked to go to uh, that garden which is not eternal garden but anyway was a, a blessed place Allah said to enter with your wife he didn't go alone so from Islamic perspective we know that purity is the highest achievement. Allah is the purest of the pure. And whoever wants to get higher in the ranks should be trying to seek purity. We have, you know, the concept of mutatahir. For example, Allah says about Masjid Quba, Fihi rajalun yuhibbun an yatatahharu. Allah praises Masjid Quba because inside that Masjid there are people who seek purity. Marriage is a way to seek purity and to be able to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the purest of the pure. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ma buniya fil islam bina'un أحب إلى الله عز وجل وأعز من التزويج. very famous hadith. in Islam, no construction has ever been built. there are tens of thousands of mosques built, schools, hospitals, madrasa, houses, bridges. Roads, many constructions have been built in Islam. But Rasulullah said, none of the constructions which are built in Islam are dearer to Allah, more lovable to Allah than marriage. Means family. <laughs> Family is our most sacred institution. If we have family strong in our community, we will have other things as well. But if we don't marry so that we don't form families, or if we marry and then quickly separate and families break down, all other things will collapse. So the foundation of Islamic way of life is family. Not only biologically we need father and mother, but spiritually, culturally, we need a strong family. If today anyone wants to do something which we can be 100% sure it is Islamic, it's making Rasulullah happy, Imam Zaman happy, is to... <laughs> is to help people form family, to marry, and remain together as family, and upbringing children 
again inside family. This is something that we can be 100% sure that it is pleasing to Allah and the Prophet and our Imam. Rasulullah also said, النِّكَاحُ السُنَّةِ فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّةِ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Nikah is my sunnah. Nikah is part of my legacy. Nikah is part of my mission, my risala, my way of life. And whoever turns away from my sunnah is not from me. Sometimes people cannot marry. It's not up to them. They are happy to marry. But for some reason, they cannot marry, especially some women. Maybe they don't have any good proposal. They are very good, mashallah, very religious, very talented, very educated. They don't find anyone. It's not a blame then for them because they want to marry. But sometimes there are people who can marry, but they are afraid or they don't feel, you know, responsible. They don't want to commit or they are, I don't know, somehow uh, not, you know, courageous or don't give priority to this. So whoever can marry and still doesn't marry means that is disregarding the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my advice, especially to our young young members of our community especially boys is that if you see in yourself maturity and responsibility and you can make another person happy even if you don't need you feel you don't need marriage but you need to marry at least the reason can be to respect the sunnah of the Prophet and to make another person happy and to form a family. Maybe you say, you know, Alhamdulillah, I'm living with my parents or, the, or for example, I am not under any you know, pressure. I can look after my taqwa without marriage. So I don't need to marry. Okay. What about making another person happy? What about having family to upbring children? What about Sunnah of the Prophet? So we should not be hesitant when it's the time to marry. And then there is another hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. <laughs> يصليهما متزوج أفضل من سبعين ركعة يصليها غير متزوج If someone is married and says two raka'a prayer two raka'a salat another person doesn't marry which must be for someone who doesn't want to marry or the time has not come to marry, but I don't think it includes people who really want to marry but cannot. It's for someone who has no excuse, for example. Two rak'ah of someone who is married is better than 70 rak'ah of someone who doesn't get married. So you see, as Ayatollah Mutahari says in different books, marriage in Islam is not just a necessity. We have to marry so that our, you know, progeny can continue. We have to marry because if we don't marry, then we may, you know, for example, you know, get into some problems. No, those are there. But marriage for us is ibadah. Marriage for us is mustahab and for some people becomes wajib. Is a way to please Allah. Marriage for us is a spiritual in essence. 
So we are very happy that tonight we are witness, witnessing marriage of two young members of our community and we pray that inshallah from the beginning which is tonight up to the last moments of their inshallah long and blessed life this marriage will remain intact and the passage of time inshallah can just make it stronger and better like a shajare tayyibe that the passage of time just makes it stronger the roots become more established and inshallah tu'ti ukullaha kulla hinan bi'izn rabba inshallah it will give fruits every now and then with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is a sermon from Imam Reza alayhi salam that Allama Majlisi Rahmatullah Alai and some of our scholars have mentioned and they say Yustahabu an Yukhtab bi khutbat al-Raza alayhi salam tabarrukan biha they say it is recommended to make this khutbah this sermon of Imam Raza tabarrukan biha to get baraka from it because it is very comprehensive. لَأَنَّهَا جَامِعَةٌ فِي مَعْنَاهَا Its meaning is very comprehensive. So, I also read it with the niyyah of this would be the sermon of our nikah ceremony. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي حمد في الكتاب نفسه وَفْتَتَحَ بِالْحَمْدِ كِتَابَهِ All praise is due to Allah who praised in his book himself and opened with hamd his book. So we praise Allah who praised himself in his book Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and started his book with Alhamd. Surah Alhamd is Fatiha Al-Kitab. Hamd is very important. وَجَعَلَ الْحَمْدَ أَوَّلَ مَحَلِّ نِعْمَتِهِ Hamd is the beginning of coming of ni'mah. If you manage to praise Allah, if you manage to do hamd, then expect that blessings would keep coming to you is the beginning of process of blessings coming and the greatest reward for those who obey is also coming through hamd after hamd imam Reza then sends salutations to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ and to his household أَئِمَّةِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَمَعَادِنِ الْحِكْمَةِ who are imams of mercy and sources of wisdom it's a very beautiful description of Ahlul Bayt Ahlul Bayt are أَئِمَّةُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَمَعَادِنُ الْحِكْمَةِ they are leaders in mercy no one can precede them in being kind and merciful. And they are the sources of hikmah. Walhamdulillahi alladhi kana fi nabiyyihi sadiq wa kitabihi natiq anna min ahaqqi al-asbab bis-salah وَأَوْلَى الْأُمُورِ بِالتَّقْدِمَةِ سَبَبًا أَوْ جَبَا نَسَبًا Imam Reza then says all the praises to Allah that in his naba' in his news which is true which is Quran and in his kitab natiq 
in his book which is speaking he has mentioned that the most important link connection that we should observe is the link that creates nasab awjaba nasaba wa amran aqaba ghina and then leads to rich so imam raza is referring to two ayah of the quran about marriage فَقَالَتْ جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ وَهُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ مِنَ الْمَاءِ بَشَرًا فَجَعَلَهُ نَسَبًا وَسِحْرًا وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ قَدِيرًا Allah is the one who created from water human beings and then made human beings connected through nasab وَسِحْرًا There is blood relation and there is marriage as a link marital relation our relatives are connected to us either through blood or through marriage so marriage is a second way of connecting to each other also allah said in the quran وَأَنْكِحُوا الْأَيَامَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّالِحِينَ مِنْ عِبَادِكُمْ وَإِمَائِكُمْ إِنْ يَكُونُوا فُقَرَاءَ يُغْنِهِمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ وَاللَّهُ وَاسْعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah says make اللهم صلى على محمد وآل محمد I congratulate uh, both uh, bride and groom and their families and if you don't mind we make some du'as because it's very blessed time and then uh, I take your leave and you can continue with the rest of the program. Allahumma salla ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa ahlah wa khudul al-kufra wa ahlah. وَشَتَّتْ شَمْلَهُمْ وَفَرِّقْ جَمْعَهُمْ وَقَلِّبْ تَدْبِيرَهُمْ اللهم ألف بينهما كما ألفت بين آدم وحواء اللهم ألف بينهما كما ألفت بين إبراهيم وسارة اللهم ألف بينهما كما ألفت بين موسى والصفورة اللهم ألف بينهما كما ألفت بين محمد وخديجة الكبرى اللهم ألف بينهما كما ألفت بين علي وفاطمة الزهرة اللهم طيب نسلهما واجعلهما ملازمين لمحمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين واجعلهما ممن قلت فيهم ادخل الجنة أنتم وأزواجكم تحبرون اللهم اخلف لهما اولادا صالحين واوسع في رزقهما انك واسع عليم اللهم اني اعيذهما بك وذريتهما من الشيطان الرجيم اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم أصلح ما فسد من ديننا والدنيانا اللهم عجل في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان واجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره وشيعته والممهدين لظهوره بحق محمد وآله الطاهرين صلواتك عليه وعليهم أجمعين صلوات Inshallah, 
Inshallah, du'as of uh, mu'mineen and mu'minat who are there and du'as of Imam Zaman, inshallah, will be for all of you. Iltamasa du'a. My pleasure, my pleasure. And I have a haja, inshallah. Please praise Allah, grant my haja, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Al-Tamasa dua.